Avatar Studio has been here for about 32 years. It started as Power Station, and uh, it became Avatar Studios in 1996. We have four main rooms. This is the second largest room, Studio C. Our, our famous room, Studio A, which is currently occupied, uh, is downstairs and on the first floor. Um, if you're interested in touring that, uh, this week, we could uh, you know, do it in the morning, if you like, before the session starts. And we have sign-ups for that online. Um, so we have four main rooms, uh, two primarily tracking rooms, um, a mix and tracking room, and a, a primarily mix room, and a Pro Tool suite. Um, this room, Studio C in particular, was the place where Like a Virgin was recorded by Madonna. And, of course, Studio A was the, the room where The River and Born in the USA with uh, Bruce Springsteen was recorded. Now, what I wanted to say in regards to that is when we recorded those artists, they weren't necessarily the superstars they were now. They are now. So I think the point is that um, they were artists that were on their way, and they happened to record here, and they be, basically the albums that were done blew up. And we're hoping that a similar experience can be had by you out there. Um, so, Avatar Studios, you know, I, I guess we're, we've been around for a long time and, um, you know, we have a reputation here. But what I want to say tonight is that, you know, we're willing to work with uh, independent bands that are out there. And there are opportunities such as, uh, you know, times when we're not busy. And also we have last minute type deals where you know room is open and we want to fill it. So I think it's worth having, you know, a dialogue or you know, a phone call or a phone call away. So um or maybe during the holidays we have time that, you know, can be made available. So we'd like to work with independent bands, particularly those that are in the in the local areas. So I wanted to just point out uh Tino Passante back there. He's our studio manager. If you want to book any time, he's the one to talk to, and he'll give you a good deal. <laughs> See, I, I'd like you to consider Avatar Studios as kind of your uh, resource center, because we have a lot of experience in doing many, many types of albums, different kind of genres. We have a lot of mics, so you can go online, take a look at that, and see what we have. So we're fortunate tonight to have uh, three producers who have um, a lot of uh, credit to their name. So I'd like to uh, give you an introduction to each of them, and then we'll get get with the uh, the panel discussion. Uh, to my right here, we have Kevin Killen. Kevin Killen has spent the last 29 years compiling an impressive list of credentials among the premier pop artists in the music industry. From Peter Gabriel to Elvis Costello, Kate Bush, Jewel, Bon Jovi to Sean Colvin. Throw in the names of you two, Brian Ferry, Shakira, Sugarland, and Duncan Sheik, and you get the idea. Um, Kevin uh, moved to New York City in the mid-1980s and continued to expand the roster of artists that he works with. In the last few years, Kevin received five Grammy Awards for his contributions to Shakira, oral fixation albums. And in 2004, he co-founded the first music online collaboration website, eSessions, with his friend Gina Fentz. He recently mixed his first country artist, Sugarland, and scored a number one hit. Kevin Killen. Uh, Steve Lillywhite entered the music scene when he was 17 as a tape operator with London's Polygram Studios. He earned his big break producing the uh, demo recordings, which landed the group Ultravox, a contract at Island Records. So Lily White soon joined the label as a staff producer, and he started helming records for new wave acts, including Sushi and the Banshees, The Psychedelic Furs, Eddie and the Hot Rods, and XDC. Uh, in 1980, Lily White's profile was raised considerably via his work on Peter Gabriel's third album, third solo album, in the same year, he also produced Boy, the debut effort for the then-unknown U2. Lily White remained U2's producer of choice throughout their early career, with his credit also appearing on 1981's acclaimed debut, The Crossing, as well as efforts from, I'm sorry, from big countries, The Crossing, as well as efforts from Marshall Crenshaw, 
and simple minds. Um, Lily White's other primary activity during the mid-90s focused on the American act, the Dave Matthews Band, for whom he helmed the 1994 major label debut, Under the Table and Dreaming, which was done here, as well as 1996's Crash. Uh, he has won Grammy Awards for Producer of the Year, Best Rock Album, and Album of the Year for U2's How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. More recently, he worked on U2's No Line on the Horizon and Fish's upcoming album. Known for his ability to inspire artists, Lily White has been instrumental in shaping many career-making albums and songs. Steve Lily White. And on the far right, my far right, your far left, Roy Hendrickson. Roy's interest in music recording began to accelerate at 16 years old, when his young band rented rehearsal space from a recording studio in New Mexico where he grew up. This was his first introduction to the world of studio recording, and he loved it. After working at the local studio for several years, where he helped with various daily activities, which included building new equipment and editing tape on old two- and four-track machines, you remember those, he moved to New York City with the intention of finding a job, and he landed one at Power Station. He learned from some of the most well-known producers and engineers, soon becoming a staff engineer after a few years, recording many different artists. Back then, the only format with which to record was analog tape, which he's a master at. Um, evolving with the times, he made the transition to various digital formats, and over the, tw the past 20 years, he, he has worked in all different styles of music and mediums, engineering, mixing, and producing. Some of the artists that he's worked with include Wilco Feist, B.B. King, Missy Elliott, Blondie, Cheap Trick, P.O.D., Gavin DeGraw, Miles Davis, Peter Paul Mary, Push Play, <coughs> Richie Havens, Carly Simon, just to name a few. Roy Hendrickson. So the questions that uh, I'm going to be asking the panel, they were uh, essentially submitted by everybody who, who submitted their registration or applied you know, for this event.